So welcome. We're here with two people from ARDC that are very important to the function of ARDC. And of course, I'm here with ARDC. We have Rosie, our executive director, and of course, John Hayes, the outreach manager. And today we're going to talk about the committees because ARDC does some important work, but we do it in a very collaborative fashion. So we're going to talk about the committees and what we're doing with the committees and also why you should be on a committee. So without further ado, I have, let's go with Rosie first. So Rosie, how's it going? Hey, I'm doing super well. Thank you so much, Rhea. Um, uh, This year we we have, do you want me to talk about the new committees first? Yeah. So let's give us a little background as to why we have committees and and what we do with them. Oh, sure. Great. So ARDC is a private foundation, which means that we are not really like membership based or anything like that. However, it's really important to us that we're as open as possible and that the work that we do serves the community to the best of our ability. And to do that well, that requires input from people who we consider to be stakeholders in the amateur radio and greater digital communication, internet communities as well. So in order to get those voices into our decision-making processes, we have created a series of committees. Uh, The Grants Advisory Committee are a group of peers who evaluate all of our uh, qualified incoming grant proposals. The Technical Advisory Committee does a combination of things. They both advise on on, uh, to four days that we use for amateur radio uses. Um, And they also this year have been doing some prototyping that I think John Hayes is going to talk a little bit about in a bit. Um, Going uh, going into 2024, we actually have two new committees um, who are also hoping to create out of peers from our community. Um, One is our conduct review committee, um, which might be the committee that has the least work so far. We have a code of conduct and we have a, uh, and it's important to us that we have people uh, on hand to evaluate any kind of incident reports from our mailing list or from a community event or um, at a conference that might, we might be attending. So those are people who might be looking at those incident reports and making um, recommendations. Again, it's important those folks would work with staff um, for sure, but it's important that we have people who are representative of our community to do that important work. Um, and last but not least, in 2024, we are starting something new um, in response to a lot of questions around like, well, ARDC has made a lot of grants. What's the impact? What's happened? Um, now that we're starting to get a lot of reports back from our grantees from the first few years, we're putting together a grants evaluation team. And the grants evaluation team does just that. They take a look at our grant reports and they uh, compare them and take a look at it from primarily initially from a quantitative standpoint. So sort of looking at all of them as a whole, looking at like with uh, like putting like with like with regards to the reports that have come in uh, to figure out what's working and what's not. So. Um, But yeah, all of those to do that work and to do that work well, we can't do it in a silo. We need to do it with community input, which is why we definitely, we need you. We need your help. Great. All right. And we have John Hayes, who is the outreach manager at ARDC. Say hello, John. Hello, John. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what you do for ARDC and also what committees you're going to talk about. Sure. So uh, my title's Outreach Manager, uh, which means that I talk to people who are interested in getting grants and uh, other interactions with ARDC. And then I just have a bunch of other tasks that that I do in support of ARDC. So I'll talk to you first about the Grants Committee. And uh, I've been on the Grants Committee since its inception, basically. Uh, I don't vote since I do interact with the potential grantees, but I do participate in the committee in the discussions and bringing people in for that. Uh, Up through uh, the third quarter of uh, this year, uh, 2023, since 2019, we've done 242 grants totaling over $22 million. So that's quite a bit of money that we've put into Uh, a combination of amateur radio scholarships and uh, some other minor uh, projects on the side. 
And those grants have ranged from a couple thousand dollars uh, to a club to well over a million dollars for uh, larger product projects like Eris. And we saved a uh, uh, big de- dish at MIT that's used by the uh, club there um, at MIT. And we continue to be involved with a, a series of projects like that. In our scholarship programs, we're trying to make sure that uh, we're reaching out to uh, not only um, the AWRL scholarship program, which we fund a large number of scholarships through each year. Uh, those require that you already have an amateur radio license. Uh, some of the other uh, scholarship programs we're doing are reaching out to underrepresented groups that we need to increase um, the participation in the amateur radio hobby and and also can lead into um, uh, careers in the STEAM area. So uh, reaching out to those, we've d- done a great program with the Society of Women Engineers. So we're doing one with Native Ford, which uh, reaches out to uh, American Indian and uh, other communities such as that. And we have several other ones, oh, Mike, uh, that uh, right. reaches into the African commu- African-American community. So what the grants committee does and it's a very important piece of work is that as the applications come in for the various grants programs um, we do a first vetting to make sure that the applicant is qualified uh, for the program Uh, and that's done internally with ardc staff Uh, once it passes that the committee um, is broken into several subcommittees just because of the amount of work uh, a group of uh, uh, committee members look at each application and uh, we have a scoring system, as you would expect, and they uh, find the better applications. So when the committee uh, puts together, we call it the portfolio uh, of grants that we believe should be funded, uh, that goes to the board of directors. The board of re- directors then uh, reviews uh, that portfolio and determines which uh, grants will actually be funded. The board uh, has um, a lot of respect for the uh, opinions of the committee. So if you get involved with it, you are going to have direct impact on these various grant applicants' ability to get funded through ARDC. Right. And I can I can tell you as a board member, you know, we, we take the weighting of the GAC very, um, very much into the final decision-making process of these grants. So, yeah. you know, um, if you are a, to be selected as a grants committee member, you will definitely have a meaningful impact. Okay, great. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, just to set the expectation, the participation in the uh, grants committee is typically a three to five hour a week uh, project doing the reviews of the um, various applications come in. And then we tend to meet on Friday uh, mornings for collective uh, discussion of the grants that we're going to move forward. So uh, just set that expectation. It's busier at certain times than at others. There are times when you wouldn't be putting in that amount of time, but like to set the right expectation for that. Okay, great. Yeah. <clears throat> and Friday mornings in um, Pacific time, because here in Eastern time was actually at noon. Um, so that's good to know. So and then, you know, speaking of time zones, we're actually looking for a number of people in different um, areas of the world, if you can participate. So, um, Rosie, uh, shifting gears a little bit, what has been your experience with these committees and, you know, how can people make a meaning meaningful impact? I mean, what a great question. So I would say, so with the committees, because we have people who are volunteers, um, we take their time and input very, very, very seriously, right? And so what can be most helpful from people who are selected is that they, um, I mean, obviously showing up, but, you know, that you really look at, especially the grants with a really critical eye, right? 
um, with some of our other committees. Uh, well, not only just a critical eye, and this is actually true for all of the committees, we want your ideas and we want your input. You know what I mean? Like this, there's definitely guidance from our board of directors. There's definitely ideas around um, what we want to make sure that we're doing from sort of a por- or portfolio or a strategic perspective. But, you know, we all listen to one another. And so for someone to make an impact, it's about, you know, doing the work and also bringing your, you know, bringing your brain, bringing your heart into the conversation, because that's what makes it, that's what makes it meaningful. And that's what makes it worthwhile. Yeah. And, you know, my interaction with, with the committees, with the TAC and the, um, the GAC committees is that I've seen a diversity of ideas. You know, we talk about diversity is like a big buzzword people use. But what I really like is a diversity of ideas, right? Like you have people from different backgrounds who come in and offer their input. Some might see um, this being impactful to their community. Some might see it being impactful to the world at large. You know, like we, we approved this big satellite project in Nepal where you're literally bringing kids who were condemned to a life of poverty into um, the STEM age, STEAM, STEM, you know, age. And, you know, we're really um, looking forward to that. All right. So let's talk about the new committees. You, we have some new committees this year. We have two of them. What what are they and why are they important to be, you know, to be um, staffed? Um, well, this is, so I'm really excited about these new committees. Before I go on to those, I want to add one uh, bit of additional information about what we're looking for for the Technical Advisory Committee for next year. Now that we have some really cool projects that are in the works, uh, we have some ideas about some specific skills that we're looking for. So obviously everything amateur radio. Um, we're also looking for people who know about router configuration, virtual machines, cybersecurity, IPv4, IPv6, DNS, BGP, et cetera. Uh, looking for people who know a bit about Linux OS and programming skills uh, like Python, HTML5, and PHP. Um, we would love some technical writing help. Um, looking for people who like beta testing, uh, people who are interested in the wiki and you know, last but very much not least, 44Net community ambassadors, people who are interested in um, more doing more engagement with people who are already on our mailing list, et cetera. So bridging the gap between what we're kind of some of the sort of experimental stuff we're doing internally and um, that part of our community. So, um, but moving on to our new committees. So uh, again, the, the conduct review committee uh, really is related to helping us to make sure that we're maintaining a, an organization that is and all of and, and environments and community spaces that are harassment free, um, that feel safe for people to engage in, um, that feel safe for people to share their ideas um, and, you know, safe to be participants. So, um we have a, a code of conduct, which we can uh, share out the link, maybe even put it yes. on the screen or something. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, so we have a, we have a code of conduct. Um, it's pretty basic, you know, like be respectful. Um, and if something comes up where you feel like you weren't able to, uh, where you feel threatened or you feel like a, uh, you aren't able to resolve uh, like, you know, yeah, you aren't able to resolve some kind of dispute. Then right. we have a team of people who are able to sort of look at your, um, look at your complaints, make an evaluation, do some intervention and take some next steps. So that's what that committee is. And we're probably looking for, I think like maybe, you know, two to three volunteers to sort of be on that and, you know, take a look at those, uh, incidences of which so far, knock on wood, we've had zero. Um, The next committee that I'm really, 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 really excited about is the grants evaluation team. This is the people have been asking for information about impacts. We've been doing blog posts here and there, but this is a really big opportunity. If you're somebody who is really interested in sharing and learning about the impact that our grants have made over the past three years, this is the team for you. So it's kind of an experiment. So it's we don't have the same sort of processes in place like we do for the Grants Advisory Committee, which has been around for three years or so. The Grants Evaluation Team, their first task is really going to be looking at all of the reports, 
uh, that have come in in you know each category that they've come in on. Um, so looking at education projects together, looking at R and D projects together, and then making some sort of qualitative analysis of each of them. So as an as an example for education projects, you know, how much did X or Y project cost? How many students were able to um, receive uh, training or licensing? Um, how many people were able to receive um, uh, hardware that they could take home? So really looking at that kind of thing so we can have a better idea of, okay, what is the sort of like, you know, best return on our investment when it comes to these educational projects? You know, of course, that said, like, the idea here always with our grants is we want to make sure our grantees are telling us what they need. You know your community, you know your project, you know best, and uh, we want to see what kind of patterns we can see across our um, our existing grants. So that's the grants evaluation team. We're definitely looking for people for that team, as many as possible, to be totally honest. So um, yeah, if that's something you're interested in, please uh, please contact us. So this, this seems to me like it'll be spreading the word about the good work that ARDC is doing. Is that correct? It'll be helping to, to form to get that to evaluation together so that we can, you know, encourage others to get grants. Is, is that what it is? Uh, t- yeah. So that's one part of it. I would say there's sort of two parts. One part is really about learning for us internally, right? Right. Um, we do get reports, we read reports, but we haven't been able to sort of look at them all in some. And so that in and of itself is going to be a really important piece of data. And then, yes, of course, secondarily, we'll be sharing out some findings from those reports. Um, we do have a policy of you know, we, we, we take confidentiality, confidentiality very seriously with regards to our grantees. And so unless they've given us explicit permission to share, say, something from their report or their application, we do keep that internal. So what might be the initial share from this initial round of exploration might be some more high level findings. Um, but certainly what we might learn from that will impact how we do reporting going forward and getting feedback from the public and from our community about like, hey, this was useful. Hey, here's where I have more questions is an important part of the process. So yes, absolutely. There will be um, a public reporting component to all of this. Okay. So finally, the most important part, how do you apply? Uh, John, do you want to take this or I can? So uh, we'll share the uh, URL to our recruiting uh, blog post below. And once you look that over, look at what we're looking for, uh, you will send your resume and the cover letter to hr at ardc.net. Those will be collected. The various committees will, uh, I'm sorry, various teams will uh, evaluate uh, the applications that come in. We need um, less than a half dozen uh, new people to join the GAC. We have a rollover uh, capability from year to year. Uh, TAC, probably as many as they can find. Right, <laughs> right. Doing really exciting stuff this year. Um, and then after October 31st, We'll start interviewing people uh, that uh, we feel would make good members of the committees and those who are selected and are approved by our board will uh, start their term uh, January 1st. Cool. And what is the deadline to apply? October 31st, Halloween. Halloween. (laughs) Good. So, yes. So don't be scared. Come and apply. Come and join us and help us do Great work in amateur radio, digital communications, and making the world a better place. All right. I'd like to thank both of you for coming on. Any final words? Thank you so much, Rhea. I'm so grateful that you're on our board and so grateful for the opportunity to have your voice help us spread the word uh, to get people involved in these amazing teams. So thank you. And I'm appreciative of the work that ARDC is doing, especially, and you see some of the kudos you know, um, with the scholarships, especially bringing up the next generation and then also doing great projects like the Slippers to Sat, M17 and um, Hamnet and other such projects. And we want to do more things. Okay, so get those applications in and I'll see you around until next time. Peace in 73. 73, everybody. 73.